The following is a stereo presentation of WYES TV New Orleans. Tout m'attire ici. Je regarde tout. Je ne souhaite que d'avoir. Everything attracts me here. I look at everything. I want nothing but my own little corner where I shall dig assiduously. In this way, I am accumulating plans which would take 10 lifetimes to carry out. You can write to me when you get this. Your answer will still find me in Louisiana. Warmest greetings, Duga. Edgar Duga, the great Parisian painter, visited New Orleans during the fall and winter of 1872 to 73. It was a time of transition for Duga almost a midlife crisis as he tried to redefine himself as a painter. He had made his very first paintings of uh, ballerinas and thoroughbreds, the subject for which he's best known, uh, but he wasn't sure about their quality. He wasn't sure about the market for them. And uh, when he came to New Orleans, he was really um, searching for his identity as a painter, wondering which step to take next. When he came here, he was only known to a small circle of family and friends. He had not had a um, show in a commercial gallery. He'd sold a, a handful of very important, wonderful paintings that we recognize now as being the beginnings of his mature and, and fully realized art. But in fact, he had not really begun a career, a successful career. In addition to that, Degas was uh, beginning to suffer from eye problems. He had eye trouble. Um, from around the early 1870s for the rest of his life, and he was uh, afraid that he was going blind. I think he wanted a change, something maybe exotic, and um, he was fascinated with America. So when his younger brother René came over and urged him to come, that's what convinced him to make the, what was then a long trip by boat to New York and then train to New Orleans. On ne fait rien ici. C'est dû au climat. One does nothing here. It lies in the climate. Devil take it, we are having temperatures in December which we would be pleased to have in June. Climate that must be unbearable in the summer and is somehow deadening during the other seasons. Degas was in crisis in 1872 and the city of New Orleans was in crisis in 1872. Uh, it was a city that was trying to recover from the devastating losses of the Civil War, both material and personal losses. The city was um, prostrate with financial ruin all around, and, and the people were not themselves, perhaps. They, were, they had gone through quite a bit, and there was a lot of political animosity. The city was bankrupt. It could not pay off its bonds. Um, all of the uh, police force, the mayor's office, the council, the state legislature, all of those people were appointed by the federal government. They were not elected to office by the people of the state of Louisiana. And so there was a tremendous amount of unrest. See, Degas was this Parisian who had come to this essentially provincial city, you know, and made even more so by losing the Civil War. So he was essentially here for, uh, for rest and relaxation. It's kind of ironic because he came to a city which is in the middle of the Reconstruction. Seul un séjour prolongé peut dévoiler les coutumes d'un peuple. Nothing but a really long stay can reveal the customs of a people, that is to say, their charm. One loves and gives art only to the things to which one is accustomed. New things capture your fancy and bore you by turns. Degas and his traveling partner, René Degas, his younger brother, arrive by train. They get into a coach, we assume, and they move up the great avenue of Esplanade, uh, the main thoroughfare of the Creole neighborhoods of the city. And they arrive at a splendid house on Esplanade, the house that, that is rented by Degas' uncle, Michel Mousson. 
and he would have entered a mansion with uh, double parlors on one side and a library beyond that, and galleries front and back, and above and below. All the trappings of the Creole family that allowed for a combination of gracious living, accommodating a warm climate. Now today when we say Creole, we generally mean someone of mixed race, light skin, mixed race, and so on, perhaps with uh, ancestry from the West Indies. In 1872, if you had asked Michel Musson what he meant if he meant he lived in a Creole section, he would have said those people who have French and Spanish ancestry and who were born in New Orleans. His mother was from New Orleans, from a, from a very distinguished Creole family, the Moussons, and his two brothers were then living in New Orleans, René and Achille. René and Achille had started a business. They first were going to be uh, wine importers, and then they went into the cotton business uh, following their uncle. For Degas, this house uh, really embodies the American wing of his family. Uh, not only does his uncle live here, but three of his cousins live here. Three beautiful women, Daisy Ray Mousson, Mathilde Mousson, and Estelle Mousson. Estelle has married Edgar Degas' younger brother, René, knitting these families even closer together. Des villas à colonnes de différents styles, peintes en villas avec colonnes et différents styles, peintes en white, dans des gardens de magnolias, orange trees, banana trees, rosy white children in black arms, charabancs ou omnibuses drawn by mules, the tall funnels of the steamboats towering at the end of the main street, that is a bit of local color if you want some, with a brilliant light at which my eyes complain. As soon as he got to New Orleans, Degas filled his letters with lists, catalogs of exotic subjects. But after filling all his letters with this exotic material, that is exactly what Degas did not paint. He wasn't interested in doing a, you know, a, a documentation of the city of New Orleans. That was the, the last thing he was interested in. I mean, he never does that in Paris either. It's, it's all, it's, his work is essentially humanist. It's the, it's the people around him. Dugas wanted to go deeper than that. He wanted to paint in a way the soul of this city, the complexity of it. He found ways to place his cousins in front of his easel in ways that got at some of the mournfulness, some of the tragedy of the Civil War for these people. I think it was one of those situations where the great artist comes and everybody says, oh, paint me, paint me, paint me. And he adored his cousins. There's no question it comes through very clearly in, I think, both the art and in the letters that he has a tremendous family feeling and affection. However, I think that the exercise of these paintings is, is one that somehow something else is going on. Dugat in these paintings in New Orleans wasn't just painting his family, he was painting a kind of Creole world, almost a vanished world after the Civil War that Dugas was evoking in these, uh, in some ways, deeply nostalgic paintings. In these Creole women who were ineffably old-fashioned for someone coming from Paris, um, who were somehow softer, who still, I think, had the scent of, of a perfume that had barely evaporated in a phrase from one of his letters, that Degas was recovering his memories of his own mother, who was, in fact, one of these Creole women, who must have looked very much like these cousins. There must have been something in their manner and in their appearance that was for him a, um, a very deep reminder of his mother. 